good afternoon, everybody. Um, so in previous interviews, what we did was talk to other investors, venture capitalists, etc. And we now also decided to speak to some of our portfolio companies to get some insights on how it is going, what has happened since we invested. And we are happy to start this off today with Stella from Lauri, who we invested in last year in March 2021. And so I'm very, very happy to have you here today, Stella. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, to sort of get it started, I would like you to give our viewers a little bit of background about yourself. Um, who are the people behind Lauri? And what is Lauri actually? Yeah, so who are the people behind Lauri? Uh, behind Lauri are a lot of people uh, by now, but uh, you're probably asking for the co-founder. So uh, there's me, Stella, and then I have a co-founder, Christian. Um, I have a academic background in business administration and innovation. So um, I studied business administration and innovation management uh, internationally, also in Spain and the Netherlands. And uh, after graduating, I worked in innovation management in consulting and afterwards moved on to work as a startup coach for high-tech startups. Um, and then there's Christian, he's a studied food scientist from Switzerland before he joined Laori. He worked at a university developing uh, beverage innovations. Um, so he is an expert in uh, extracting the most aroma out of natural ingredients. And uh, yeah, this, what, what, this is what makes uh, us a perfect combination, the, the perfect combination of a business and product development skills. And you also uh, asked about Laori. So what is Laori? Laori creates non-alcoholic alternatives to known spirits. So our product range consists of an alcohol-free alternative to gin and rum. So gin and tonic without the uh, hangover or a nice uh, dark and stormy or all Cuban also without having the headache next day. Great, I've, I have to say, I, I tried the, the rum the last time or the alternative to rum last time I, I met you in the offices in Berlin. And I have to say, I really, really liked it. And I still have one small taster bottle here in my apartment. Um, I'm just waiting to buy some, some more ingredients to mix another dark and stormy. I really uh, also, a little hint, you can order it now via our online shop to Spain. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. That's good to know. Um, so how many, you said the team has obviously grown now. How many are you at the moment? Uh, we are now uh, seven people, um, full, five full-time employees. Um, and yeah, we are looking for more to grow faster. Great. That, that also sort of takes me to, to the next question I wanted to ask you. I, I mentioned in the introduction that we joined or we invested into Lowry in March 21. Uh, what happened since then? A lot, so much. We, we, the last month we, uh, yeah, we were thinking about the last year and how small and a few people we were uh, when you invested. And Lauri is huge now, if you compare it. So um, yeah, last year uh, we uh, tripled our revenue. We are quite happy about that. Um, one highlight also was that we have been aired on German Shark Tank. Um, which helped us uh, becoming a really well-known brand in Germany. Um, then another milestone was that we hired so many people in October and suddenly had a real team, uh, which now pushed forward, which makes us very happy. And then in November, we launched uh, our second product, uh, the Rum Alternative, um, which yeah, uh, everybody is very happy about. We also already received an award um, for its um, international award, uh, yeah, the highest uh, yeah, medal you could get for, for that product. And also we were the only rum alternative uh, getting a medal. So we are quite happy about that. Great, there's uh, some, some billion, billion progress made in that time. Um, I mean, it sounds like that everything went to plan. <laughs> Did you, would, you, would you say that is the case or would you say, okay, we, we might have, you know, Face some struggle along that way as well. No, yeah, uh, we we made some, we had some learnings, uh, a lot of struggle. Um, always uh, not enough people, a biggest struggle. Um, 
No, so uh, I think two biggest fails uh, were uh, one is that we had a uh, yeah, strong sales in the first half of the year and we projected that it uh, stayed like that and then we overproduced, uh, way overproduced. We are struggling still with that now. Um, so yeah, let's see uh, how we solve that. Uh, everybody is uh, trying to sell like pallets to get, get the, the product out. So yeah, let's see uh, how we solve that. And then the uh, other uh, problem was with our cash flow. So um, yeah, due to having a strong start into the new year and also overproducing, uh, we also uh, we didn't really project uh, yeah a summer down uh, in revenue. And also uh, we saw worldwide uh, the revenue going down in September still. Um, we saw it with everybody. Um, so yeah, that uh, was uh, and still is a bit uh, of a struggle, but uh, we know now uh, how, how necessary and uh, a good cash flow planning is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know. Yeah, we, we, we did work on that quite a bit. I mean, um, the, the positive side is that you're, the company has been growing in general. And, and as you said before, you know, you've, you've actually managed to, to multiply your sales by an important number. And the good thing is that you have a product that you can just keep on selling. You know, it's on stock. And it's something yeah. that can be sold. So I mean, it's it's uh, it's not perishable in that way. So I think yeah. there's, there's always pros and cons to this. Um, exactly. So yeah. So 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 now that we kind of looked into the into the past and what what kind of happened over the last few months, um, how about you tell us a little bit what the plans for the future are? Where where is Lowry heading at the moment? So we're heading to becoming a very big company so we understood now where are our, our pillars are what we need to do to grow faster bigger and yeah yeah be be part of that race that is happening in that alcohol free uh sphere at, at the moment so um yeah this is uh, what we're planning to do you know to have like our key hires in sales in marketing so you know everybody just yeah helps us level the company uh, a step up and you know grow faster. So um, yeah, also adding new products. Um, yeah, and yeah, not only on one level yeah, but multiple levels. Levels. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Do you want to maybe give us a, a sneak peek into what kind of products we can we can uh, look forward to? Sure. Sure. So. Uh, our newest product will be an alcohol-free aperitivo, so similar, so we can finally have an alternative to a, uh, a spritz aperol, right? So, uh, you know, summer is coming soon. And then um, we will launch a, so we're planning to launch an alcohol-free alternative to whiskey. Um, so when it's winter again, of course. Um, and then we're also planning to launch a ready-to-drink product. So this is not so much a revenue stream as a marketing tool because it helps us uh, getting the product out faster because uh, non-alcoholic spirits are designed so you enjoy them in a drink and not pure. And when you yeah, give out a sample, you always you know, have to add fillers and this is quite complicated. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some, one thing that I'm, I'm always very curious is about and that obviously was one of the reasons why we also decided to, to back the company back in the days, is where do you see this whole market going? It's going to be huge. Uh, I, I, you know, when I have a good day, I would always say 20, 20, 2050, let's see how much alcohol we have left. So uh, alcohol-free spirits or the alcohol-free market will outperform alcohol market because I, I believe that in the future, uh, the same will happen to alcohol that happened to the cigarette, you know, because we start now talking about the down, downsides of alcohol, you know, and of course we all, you know, we all love a nice glass of wine or ice cold beer, you know, especially in Spain, um, but, you know, people start talking about what alcohol does to you, to your body, to families, to overall society. And um, I believe that it will be more and highly regulated in the future. And also, you know, people start drinking less, you know, they are aware of the, the health consequences of alcohol and um, they, you know, they moderate 
alcohol consumption. So, you know, it's their free choice to drink less and we are stepping into that, right? So we are there and I believe it's going to be huge. Yeah, okay, thank you for, for that little outline. I think it's always really interesting and, and exciting to speak with people who are really that deep into a market to sort of get those get those special insights. Um, and then there's, there's a last question that I would like to ask, um, which is very strongly related to the, the current situation, sort of like a, a macroeconomic situation. And, and this is actually a, a topic that one of our uh, investors in Faraday got my attention to, which was about supply chain, uh, supply chain shortages also in the beverage uh, market. You know, everybody's talking about microchips, but uh, he was saying to me that they actually have issues getting enough supply of wine bottles to actually fill their wine. So, so my question is, did you face a similar problem? Uh, if yes, how did you mitigate it? Or, or how do you see that is sort of affecting the market? Yeah, so until now, we didn't really experience that shorted resort in uh, packaging, like the packaging for sending out Laori, um, but not really because we are always very good in planning ahead um, and we always have some some things on stock. So we, we mitigate also that problem because we um, work with very standardized pro um, products and huge uh, supplier, right? So we never work with startups. We just don't do it um, because, you know, there's always something going wrong or most of the time, or I don't know, they don't plan very well. So uh, we, we try to work with the biggest and most professional suppliers there are. Um, then, for example, for bottles, we, we have a standard bottle, right? So we don't use fancy bottles. It's just standard product. It's cheap. Um, so, but um, for example, in summer, we had a little uh, hiccup. Um, we uh, produced uh, 10,000 bottles of Laori, produced the product, and then uh, in production, they opened uh, the, the pallets. And so, wow, that is the wrong bottle. So it was just uh, the, the wrong top. So we have a screw and they had like a cork and then we had like all the product, but no bottle. So um, we sat down, uh, yeah, um, discussed different scenarios. And within three days, we uh, had a supplier um, sending us uh, 10,000 bottles of the same, of the right bottle, right? So, uh, the learning uh, from that is that we have now two or three supplier of the of the um, yeah goods we need yeah and also for example for ingredients we always have um, our ingredients for one whole year on stock so we can always you know adjust production and uh, so we don't also have that gap right yeah and then we also of course plan very uh, tightly ahead with our suppliers so we always show them what is our plan, adjust it quarterly, you know, with, with, with logistics, with ingredient suppliers, with bottle suppliers. And it's always good, you know, to have a good connection to your suppliers and so sometimes send them a nice present. So. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you, thank you very much for, for, for that insight as well. I thought that was a super interesting question that, that was brought up um, at that point. And I'm also very happy to, to see that you sort of pulled out all of these different learnings. Um, so Stella, I just really want to say thank you very much for, for today, for um, being so open about all of these different questions and learnings and challenges, but also all the successes and advances that you've made over the last 12 months, really. And um, we are super happy to be on board. I'm really looking forward to the, to the new product innovations that you're bringing out this month or the next months. And um, I'm very, very happy to after this meeting, have one of my little Lowry rums <laughs> and enjoy that. Thank you very much, Stella. Thank you, Dennis, and also Faraday for being on our site and listening uh, to uh, all the ups and downs and uh, helping us through it.